Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I hope you don't have indigestion tonight. I know many of you have probably just finished eating dinner and it's settling into your anatomy. This is a very special night, we think. We hope you'll agree. We have an, uh, an outstanding panelist, group of panelists, on a very important national topic and a topic of importance to our country. The program is sponsored jointly by the recently launched Marie Fielder Center for Democracy, Leadership, and Education here at Fielding, and by our colleagues in clinical psychology. And I want to just, before going any further, just thank my colleague, particularly Dr. Freeman, for her uh, continuing support and uh, and uh, encouragement to make this program possible, and also A.G. Green from our faculty. For those of you who do not know about the Marie Fielder Center, there is a brochure on the outer table. I hope you take a look at it. It's our institutional umbrella organization that, that was created and launched formally just a few months ago to provide a multidisciplinary and future school for research, public discourse, and advocacy on the on topics pertaining to social justice, social democracy, inclusion, and diversity. This is uh, hopefully a, uh, the beginning of a, of a tradition in Fielding, where the Fielder Center, in collaboration with various faculties, will sponsor programs of importance to uh, the country and to the university and one in which we'll invite nationally prominent speakers to be a part of the conversation. <coughs> Obviously the topic that we're going to be addressing tonight is one, one of very important national significance, not just because of recent days and weeks, but I would say probably for, for centuries in this country with respect to full inclusion of all people in every aspect of life. Before going further, I would like to bring up our president, Dr. Katrina Rogers, to make a few opening remarks. Orlando, I think he wandered off with my opening remarks. <laughs> good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is really an exciting moment for Fielding. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been okay also. I want to welcome you to the Marie Fielder Center for Democracy, Leadership, and Education event. It's really a hallmark of fielding whenever I think about the kinds of events that we put on at our summer sessions and our winter sessions. And for those of you who may be new to fielding, these are our national sessions for our students, faculty, alumni, and often our trustees join us as well, and special guests. It's really a hallmark that we create these spaces when we're together to hold a wide variety of discussions and dialogue around big complex issues in our society. So for example, the Alonzo Center for Psychodynamic Studies, which is housed in the uh, clinical psychology uh, program in the School of Psychology, is a really good example. They focus on the theory and practice in that particular field. And in the same way, the Marie Fielder Center convenes dialogue about theory, leadership, and practice on any number of issues concerning democracy and education. And tonight, we have this terrific opportunity here. We have the special pleasure of hosting a conversation on enhancing diversity, inclusion, and cultural competence in higher education. And as a learning community and one devoted to graduate education, and I always like to remind us that we are one of the few freestanding independent graduate institutions in the country, it's incumbent upon us to ask ourselves the questions that our students face in their professional and personal lives every day, often, and questions that we all face as citizens. And that's exactly the work that Marie Fielder did. So as you listen to the conversation, as you contribute, as you reflect, we remind ourselves that Marie Fielder herself was a civil rights activist. She was instrumental in the integration of the public school systems in Northern California. 
and in educating a generation of leaders that fostered positive social change. And she was also a founding board member of Fielding, who really saw our learning model as a way to help people through education to achieve their highest potential and to help others. So it's also my pleasure tonight to introduce Dr. Orlando Taylor, because he wouldn't introduce himself, of course. So let's remind ourselves of our, our colleague to my right. Orlando is currently the Vice President for Strategic Initiatives and Research here. He's also the Principal Investigator and Director for a National Science Foundation funded grant to advance women in the STEM professions into leadership positions at the nation's historically black colleges and universities and also at tribal colleges. He has served in higher education for decades in several leadership positions at Howard University, for example, and as the president of the Washington DC campus of the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. He was also, you may not know this, one of the architects of the American Association of College and Universities National Science Foundation funded preparing critical faculty for the future. He's been a national leader for years and we're honored to have him in our community with us and uh, we owe this whole invention of the Marie Fielder Center to a summer session two years ago, and it was it was invented and created by Orlando and Nicola Smith. Nicola, if you could stand, if you're willing, or wave. Hi, Nicola. <laughs> Nicola is a long-serving faculty member in our EDD program, Educational Leadership for Change, and happens to be the daughter of Marie Fielder. So thank you, Nicola, and thank you, Orlando. And now I will turn the podium back over to Orlando, and I will take his speech. <laughs> Thank you, President Rogers. I'm glad I didn't read your speech. <laughs> Could have done that. I am uh, deeply honored to introduce to you the panelists, and I would not take a lot of time to do that. You have a, a flyer that will tell you about them. Um, we're going to begin with um, first our own uh, Steve Shapiro. Steve is currently an own Dean of Academic Affairs at Fielding Graduate University and a member of the faculty of the School of Leadership Studies. He uh, has had a long career in higher education, at Goddard College, for example, leadership there, faculty member. He has uh, many publications in the area of diversity and inclusion and social justice. And he's been uh, the leader in the preparation of a new um, diversity plan for the university. He'll, begin the conversation tonight by giving us a kind of a context of what the thinking is about how that plan might look. He'll come first and speak just a few minutes. He'll be followed by Dr. Janet Helms. Dr. Helms is from Boston College. She's the Augustus Long Professor in the Department of Counseling, Development, and Educational Psychology. And she's the Director of the Institute for the Study and Promotion of Race and Culture in Boston College. She's the past president of the Society of Counseling Psychology of the American Psychological Association. She's truly a national leader on the topic of race and culture, with numerous publications in professional journals, books, chapters in books, monographs, participation in the work of many national organizations, including the American Psychological Association, from which she has achieved many awards. It's difficult to describe Patricia Arnando in a way because she has so many hats. She is a former colleague of mine at Chicago School. She was president when I served as president in Washington. She was president of the Chicago campus, the flagship campus of the Chicago School. She too has held many leadership roles in higher education, including Arizona State University and the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. She is a co-PI with me on the grant that the President mentioned. She has held many leadership roles in higher education. She's been, for example, the President of the uh, American Counseling Association, the American Psychological Association Division 45, 
Society for the Psychological Study of Culture, Ethnicity, and Race, and the, the National Latino Psychological Association. She too has many publications. She's known across the country, and I have them have her in the room with this distinguished panel that group of panelists is really quite special for Fieldy. What you probably do not know, she's just been recently appointed as a faculty fellow at Fieldy Graduate University. So she is now a part of our family. So we're very happy about that. But we did not tell her that means that she'll be called upon a lot. <laughs> Surprise. Without further ado, I present to you Professor Dr. Steve Spiro. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I feel humbled being on the panel with our distinguished guest. And I'd like to, I was asked to uh, provide a little context uh, of what we've been trying to do at Fielding uh, to address these issues. And then we can put our guest remarks um, to work in helping us uh, achieve our goals in this area. Um, Oops. Uh, we loaded these slides. Here we go. That's me. Okay. All right. We're heading in the right direction. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, frame these remarks by presenting a little bit of context of where we've been over the some of the years at Fielding and where we'd like to go in regard to our social justice, diversity, and inclusion initiatives. Um, so I'm going to wind up talking about our current the work we're doing, our current plan, but it seemed important to set a little, a little context for it. So there are really uh, four different uh, things I want to talk about. The first is, is re revisiting some of our historical efforts, um, and then really beginning the current story with the diversity summit that we had in 2009. Uh, leading to a social and ecological justice commission, which grew out of that, and then to our current uh, diversity plan. You know, one thing you might pick up just from that uh, information of these summits and this uh, commission and this new plan that we seem to be a lot better at, at making plans than uh, implementing them. <laughs> When I think about the history, I, it was really helpful to read a piece that our former Provost Senator Stefano wrote in preparation for this 2009 summit, which was for trying to give some, some context to the history of our, of our efforts. And you know, one of the things she pointed out um, is that we've, we were uh, you know, a, a place that thought about ourselves as thinking about social justice and committed to it. Uh, but it was in a very, uh, you know, kind of taken for granted way. So I think there were, um, from what I understand, uh, you know, ex a lot of efforts or some efforts focused externally at doing social justice work in the outside world, but a sense of taking for granted that, well, we must be okay internally because we're, we think we believe in, so in social justice. but. I think a question I would raise, I want to come back to, is were we, you know, really aware of our own cultural norms and biases? You know, what were we blind to about uh, the culture that we had and have? So it, I shouldn't say we're aware. Are we aware? Uh, so over time, the institutional efforts have ebbed and flowed, uh, come and gone. Um, and I think, as I thought about it, I think there are a few themes in that history. Um, one, I've just pointed to external efforts, more in really intentional efforts internally. Uh, there have been struggles over definitions about, well, what do, we do, what do we mean by diversity, and who's included, and what is social justice? And so, you know, academics can talk about these things forever and not, you know, do, do a whole lot. So I think we've often been stuck in that place. Um, I think another thing is we've had inconsistent support from leadership. So some presidents, provosts, have been uh, quite supportive of working in these areas and others have not. Uh, I, I think right now we're poised um, to really do some serious work. I hope we are because our readership uh, 
is very supportive uh, from the board to the president, Pro Rose, and, and Dr. Taylor. And I think both their commitment and the resources I hope they'll provide um, may enable us to do more than we have been able to do in the past. One thing that led up to the, uh, from what I understand, to the Diversity Summit in 2009 was that the board and the president at that time, really starting from the board, got really serious about, so are we really committed to diversity and social justice? What are we really doing? And the board did some internal work and really encouraged uh, our, our, our community to look at ourselves. So um, uh, Dr. DiStefano engaged the whole community in in-depth conversations within the school and across the schools, which culminated in all schools face-to-face -face, um, meeting which include to have courageous conversations about these topics. Several important conclusions uh, uh, arose from this and set of recommendations, many of which have been acted on, some have not. So one of them was to shift the emphasis in, in talking about diversity and social justice to social justice and diversity. Now, the, the important idea there was that we, we can't really think about diversity without thinking about issues of structural inequality. And divert, there's all kinds of diversity. You know, diversity just means different difference, right? Different kinds of people. Well, I think the importance was thinking about how, how does diversity relate to the presence of social justice or the lack of social justice? Because those are the kinds of issues that we need to address to create a just and inclusive climate. A second recommendation, uh, so I think we did, we've did. we done the first, at least uh, rhetorically. Uh, the second, we integrated all the, in, the one about marketing. I think we were doing that for a while, and now, you know, maybe not so much. Um, I think this next one was very important. Uh, I, I, I referenced the struggles over definitions. Well, out of this uh, summit, there arose a, a definition of the, around social justice and, and diversity which was approved by various five to eight approve it, which was uh, the commitment to social justice at fielding is understanding, analyzing, and acting to reduce inequality, oppression, and social stratification, and to make explicit the connections among economic, ecological, and social justice issues. Now, uh, my own reflection would be we've been um, a little better about that, again, externally, than thinking about, you know, do we have our own house in order around all these inequality, oppression, social stratification, infielding. So there are many recommendations. I'm not going to go through them all, or we wouldn't have time to hear from anybody else. But um, I'll just pick out a few. There was a recommendation that each, each school develop a plan around these issues and, be, and, and share that with other people. Um, they, they should, they, it, there included recommendations to the, uh, the Senate Leadership Committee in regard to curriculum. Uh, the faculty leader in this area, that was not done, although some of the curriculum work was done. Uh, and to launch and coordinate an intergroup dialogue project and an action inquiry project. Uh, now, these recommendations, in, say, some of them were acted upon, were there was another recommendation about our, our internal uh, staff units. <coughs> this this uh, plan, in turn, led to the creation of a, a social and ecological justice commission, which was authorized by the Senate Leadership Committee, which included faculty from all schools, and led to an assessment by leaders of each school of their climate and plans for next steps. Uh, there was a review of dissertations related to social justice and recommendations to administration, faculty, and we had uh, programs and, and the university as a whole. Uh, I, I won't read you all these recommendations, but they, or you can look, you can scan them. But they had to do with various elements, both within the curriculum and within the uh, schools, to address issues of, of climate curriculum as well as composition, and to do things to engage us in work in the outside world around communities of practice and working for social justice. 
so our current plan, these recommendations, as I said, some of, some of these things were done. Some have been uh, particularly the communities of practice and the social transformation project. Uh, but again, I think a lot of our efforts have been focused externally, not so much internally. So our current plan, when, when Provost uh, Porter joined us a uh, year and a half ago, uh, I think notice that, uh, one, we had a lot of plans to, uh, that hadn't been fully implemented. And two, we began hearing about concerns uh, from uh, many of our, of our faculty and students of color about concerns about uh, the climate here. I think certainly noticed uh, our largely monochromatic uh, color of, of our community and, and really uh, urged us to do, to do something about it. Um, and he asked me to uh, convene and lead uh, a group to develop a plan which we can put into action quickly. So I just want to highlight the main goals of the plan and I'm working now with a, a, great, a team of faculty uh, from, from each school in developing it. Um, the first is building an inclusive culture at Fielding by utilizing current diversity to intentionally create a climate of inclusion in which people from all identity groups are included and engaged. Now, uh, we certainly have a lot of work to do in this area. We just um, have gotten feedback from uh, some students here this week about uh, some concerns in which these, it's not feeling very inclusive. But I think we have some good actionable recommendations that we can put in our plan. The second, and all the, all the goals are interrelated. Uh, you can't do one without the other, really. But the second is about assuring the intercultural competence of all faculty, administration, and staff. So uh, we need, as those of us who are white, to be aware of our, uh, the limitations of, of our um, understandings, uh, to be aware of the ways in which uh, I think our culture is you know, a, a, a white kind of culture that um, organized around things which may feel, um, quote, normal, to some of us, but not so comfortable to others. So, and these are things which are, are, are largely out of our awareness until we start to pay attention to them. So we, we have a lot of work to do to get up to speed on this. Uh, the third, and again it's related, is, is faculty recruitment and retention and hiring, hiring uh, to diversify our community. Uh, you know, we've heard some people, some of my uh, colleagues of color have said, well, it, you know, I sometimes feel I, I don't feel so great about uh, recruiting some of my friends and colleagues because of the, of the climate here. Well, that says a lot. It tells us we have a lot of work to do. Curriculum. Um, to make sure people see themselves reflected in the curriculum. Not only so people can engage with the material, just so that we're prepared to work with, you know, diverse people uh, you know, wherever we we're in whatever context we find ourselves. And the fifth is around student recruitment experience and retention. Um, and again, if you don't have an inclusive climate and you don't have uh, students seeing people like them on the faculty. This is very challenging to do, so uh, both to recruit and retain students. So, uh, to me, the, our, the, our best uh, resource in regard to most of these areas is our students and alumni, and we need to listen to them and develop plans that will create the kind of feeling I think that we'd all uh, like it to be. So I'm looking forward to uh, what we can learn from my colleagues here about how we can do that. Thank you.